Okay, you asked uh, quite a few questions, and I thought maybe it would be simpler if I uh, just tried to do this on a video and send it to you really quickly, since you're trying to get it uh, years going on the weekend. Um, you talked about, you wondered if it were better for the fish to lay the barrel down. No, it actually isn't. Uh, there's uh, been quite a few systems like this, even people growing them with no pumps and just changing the water out um, half of it every day. Uh, all these type of fish, including the ones you're thinking about, are the schooling fish, and they swim very little, and they're very happy just staying in one place. Uh, so if you have space, I suppose it's fine if you want to turn them on the side, but you're going to be making more of a frame. I'll show you the little frame that, that I made if I can. It's really very simple. Um, I believe that those are, what's the thickness? Probably a um, one by four. I think they are. This end piece was uh, sold as cedar fencing, and that over here is pine. And I kind of uh, use screws and a reinforcer underneath. And hopefully that'll let you see the frame that I made. That also served several purposes. It got it up higher, as you can see, and kept uh, most of the plumbing out of the barrel so that way the plumbing's out of the barrel for the most part and I can keep it as full as possible. Uh, it is, um, I usually keep it about, I don't know if you can see those markings, I usually keep it about uh, between 45 and 50 gallons. It doesn't go down that much. It's filling back up at the moment but let me get down here close see if we can see some of the other stuff we did. Now I used uh, silicon glue, uh, just aquarium sealant underneath uh, uh, in these pieces. If you notice right here, uh, this fitting and a fitting like it on the inside actually screw together. So this, and there's a smaller hole, sorry, uh, and Another one, I just find these fittings that fit together. Then this is just a small section. By the way, these are all one inch fittings and one inch PVC pipe. Schedule 40 PVC pipe. Uh, an elbow. Um, this is a T. I'm going to show you more about that in a moment. What's on the other side? You can't see it. And then the same thing for that drain. And. Uh, this little aeration thing is just made out of CPVC. I believe this is a um, half inch or quarter inch piece. I don't remember. I just had it laying around. And I just drilled holes kind of in a spiral pattern around it. And believe it or not, it's very low tech. This just has a cork in the end uh, here. And it's just uh, wedged up in here. Nothing to even hold it. And it works very well. Uh, this is just a... Uh, a zip tie that holds it in this position. It's very important that the siphon loop stays in the position that you want it. And notice I have a little metal hook here that keeps it at this level and keeps the nice curve. It's very important that the curve uh, I noticed stay stay correct. Um, as far as the plants, uh, I'm I'm just starting with them. I've had some lettuce growing in here just to make sure that told me when it was ready and they were growing well. I took them out. But that's a, uh, you can put really almost anything, any garden vegetables you can put in this and try them at least. Uh, that's a Japanese eggplant. There's some strawberry. Uh, believe it or not, that's a watermelon and another watermelon over there. Uh, and then I have some, um, that's an heirloom tomato growing right there. Uh, and uh, another strawberry plant. And these are uh, honeydew melons. And uh, we'll see how they produce. I may have to put some, uh, uh, I don't know, some kind of trellis or something. I thought about it here to hang down uh, or some wire for them to. Um, hang on, but I'll, I'll figure that out. Uh, everything else is one inch as well. These are one inch ball valves, and yes, they are ball valves. Um, one inch PVC, of course, 
a one inch elbow and I didn't show you that the other day sometimes you have to really make sure everything is really washed we really worked uh, contractors rake you know heavy duty debris rake a flat point a flat uh, shovel a high pressure hose on um, a concrete surface it was our driveway in the front of the house and we raked and washed and raked and washed and raked scooped and washed and we washed till all of this uh, uh, the water flew uh, 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 the water drained clear flowed clear and uh, because it was just red powder all in it but it, it took a while but it was no big deal we also put a piece of scotch bright pad any kind of filter material and it catches some uh, we did that at first and it got a little bit more of the red material uh, but we've not had any problem it cleared up really well um, uh, very very shortly because there was hardly anything left and that's that's the important part I will also tell you this I believe that the uh, the lava rock is important because of the porosity since these are small beds and uh, a lot more of the uh, uh, nitrifying bacteria can grow in the porous rock but we're thinking about putting a level reducing this down just a little bit uh, like to here here and putting a level of just washed gravel regular gravel like uh, other people use to be able to plant a little easier um, it's a little rough on the fingers when you start digging to put transplants in it so you can consider that I would still use the red lava rock to here um, and then put a, a layer of uh, uh, a layer of gravel if I were to do it over so again uh, let me see on this end uh, let's see if you can see that sorry the angles are kind of difficult uh, I actually boxed it in with this piece here uh, and our uh, air stone pump sits under there I know that you can't see it but that's what that is uh, this one of course is the pump going down in the in the barrel but this is the electrical cord for the air stone pump and we do run an air stone uh, for extra aeration I think that's very important so now let me see if I can give you a picture of the connectors here. What we're doing here is this is a T in between the ball valves and this is um, a reducer has nothing we, we're not doing that to increase pressure or decrease or anything but um, it's just convenient connectors. This actually was a small connector that allows you to connect a standard um, mail end garden hose attachment. That's what the brass is. This is a garden hose, a 5 8 inch garden hose here in the States. And this screws into this. And this one little section, this plastic section, you can find in order to connect uh, garden hoses to uh, PVC. So that's going and traveling down into uh, the pump. And I'm going to try to show you the pump and the skirt that's on it. Okay. I can do this. I made that skirt. That skirt is actually from uh, um, uh, I believe it's from an evaporative cooler. And I just cut it so that it fits. There's the size of the pump. Maybe that'll give you an idea. I don't know really what size that is. Sorry. Um, it's actually overkill. It's pretty big. Because I, if you notice, I really have to turn the ball valves down. And uh, let's take a look at that again, just a second. See if I can see any more. That is a Beckett Corporation submersible fountain pump. 120 volt, 60 hertz. That's all it says. 